Hello. I'm not in a very good mood. <laughs> Just a warning. I have actually already recorded this video today and I've actually chosen a different thing to record on as if you don't know this, I normally record it on my phone. And also I don't normally do FaceTime. <laughs> okay. I'm very I'm doing well on my laptop, which I would say the camera quality is and the video recorded perfectly. I I got through almost eight, it was eighteen minutes long, and all right, I finished the recording. I think found out my laptop. Sorry about that. <laughs> my laptop does not record my voice, which is annoying, and I'm very scared to continue because just in case I did it again. I don't know if my microphone was not working for some reason or whatever. But as you see, my quality of my laptop's not very good. So yeah, I'm going to try my best to be as enthusiastic as I was the first time. Welcome, if you have not been here before, this is Emmy's Talk on Books. And hello, <laughs> if you've already watched some of my videos, you should know about this. I tend to normally do FaceTimes. I thought... I'll do give it a go and actually this is the very first time I put my face on YouTube. Okay. I have watched a couple of videos on people doing book reviews and I realised I might have been doing it wrong the whole time. Well not wrong, but doing it in my own special way. So I thought I'd give it a go doing FaceTime. I don't know if you call it that way, face do you call it FaceTime? We'll talk talking about my, to myself now. Great. Okay. I'm gonna just go through the pile that I did beforehand. Right. When the video before wait which you have not you can't see because I have no voice in it. I'm mute. <laughs> I was going through a couple of books. Um five specifically. Right. Let's start, okay? Let's hope my voice records in this one and the quality's not too bad. <laughs> okay. Is that back front? I don't know. It says Me Before You. Me Before You is actually a very popular book and it is a bestseller by Jojo Moyes. Moyes? Moyes. Also, sorry if I pronounced anything seriously wrong. I did not mean to. If you've watched my videos before, I've mentioned I am dyslexic. I have trouble reading, but I love reading. I'll never give that up for anything in the world. Well, actually, maybe, oh, no, I can't, no. Actually, no, not even for a million pounds, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Move for you. There is the it's made into a movie now and everything, so a lot of people would have heard about this book. Okay, and I imagine it's going to say this. I have not read this book yet, but I've watched the movie. I know you're supposed to read the book, watch then watch the movie, but I'm doing it the opposite way round. I got a chance to watch the book movie actually in the cinema, so I did not take up. I did not lose that chance to watch it actually in the cinema. I actually love the cinema. I don't go very often. Let's move this bit closer. <laughs> move this bit down. Yeah, so it's much better now. And I I love it. I love the cinema. I love being there to watch the movies brand new out. Even though I hate that I can't pause it when I just want to get up and walk about. Because my legs are killing me. <laughs> okay, before you, it is a bestseller. Is a one Sticker on the front says now over five million copies sold worldwide. I don't think that's as as most as Harry Potter, but yeah, still good. <laughs> I'm actually gonna read the blurb and some reviews that are written on the back by rather. I think they're by other authors and and newspapers. 
Okay. Right. Let's start. Right, the, this one, this review's by a closer. I don't know who that is. Is it a newspaper? You tell me in the comments. I don't know. <laughs> Truly beautiful. Made us laugh, smile, and sob like a baby. You simply have to read it. That's quite good. Because <laughs> I will be reading the book soon. Effectively. <laughs> okay. This one's by Independent on Sunday. No. Destined to be the novel that friends press upon each other more than any other. Lou and Will are a couple who readers will take to their hearts and they, as they did one, one days. I don't know if that's a book reference or, okay. Emma and Dex, a novel that depends, demands an afternoon on the sofa with its fists full of tissues. Well, I don't normally cry with books. They make, most time I laugh. So, I would actually love to see if this book makes you cry. I did know when I was in the cinema, there was a lot of old people in there and a lot of old ladies who were crying during the movie. <laughs> right, this one's by Ella. A, a tr trumpet pack, packs such an emotional punch, you'll need a box full of tissues. Another one saying, you're crying. Okay, this one's by Mary Claire. Claire? Yes, that's, that's the face Claire. Magical and heartbreaking. Waterproof mascara essential. I love how all these reviews say that you cry. <laughs> Alright then, let's read the blurb. She knows how many footsteps there are between the bus stop and home. She knows she likes on, she, she likes working in the button, buttered bun tea shop and she knows she might not love her boyfriend Patrick. What Lou doesn't know is she's about to lose her job or that knowing what's coming is what keeps her sane. Will tra Trainer Dryer? No. Knows his motorcycle accident took away his desire to live. He knows everything feels very small and rather joyless now and he knows exactly how he's going to put a stop to that. But Will doesn't know is that Lou is about to burst into his world in a riot of colour. And neither of them knows that they're going to change the other, the other for all time. Well, <sighs> if I had not watched the movie, I would be. It's sort of like it's sort of the type of love that brings you right in, and it just makes you feel like I need to read this. I need to read it now, and nothing can stop me. Well, it's actually nothing could stop me reading it right now. I, I mean, I have I have done a twenty four hour thing when I I read two books in one day, so I could actually do this. I could finish my book while I'm reading at the moment and read this in one day. <laughs> okay, um, okay, let's get on to the next book. This genre is totally different to Me Before You. Oh, also, just to let you know, there is a second book of Me Before You, so. If you're prepared to read Me Before You, prepare to read a book, the second book after. Which, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of at the moment. I saw it in the bookshops, but I do not know it at the moment. Oh. I also say that this book is actually not mine. It belongs to my sister, my older sister, Am Ambi. <laughs> She'll love that, giving her a little reference on my... YouTube channel. Well, anyway, let's go on to this book. Ta da! To me, that the words are backwards. I don't know if that is for you lot as well. Don't know why. Well, anyway, this is called Flesh and Bone. Flash, Flash and Bones. By Kathy by Kathy Riches. Thing says. Well, anyway, this book, as you can see, it looks pretty gruesome. And I got this book from, I'm quite sure it was from a charity shop. Oh, I cannot catch up no more. <laughs> I know it's second hand, that's all I can say. I'm a charity shop addict. I tell you that now. I, if I see a charity shop, I walk in it, check out the book section, go to a till, buy five books. Because, luck for me, oh, the charity shops that I live around, Always have sales on the books. 
you can get like kids books that actually aren't kids books for 50p and I'm like all right, um, just take my money. Just take my money, and I'll just take like, all the books. <laughs> all right, let's read the blurb. And oh, there's actually some, not many. Yes, don't be before you book. There are some reviews on here. One by Sunday Express and one by Daily Mail. Right, Sunday Express says, "Will Kathy Riches, the reader, that the reader knows, the reader, the reader knows they're in the hands of an expert." Hmm. Daily Mail. Highly quali high quality thriller writing with a human touch. Mm, must be good then. <laughs> okay, let's do um, the blurb. Even for, uh, for, for sense. Oh, I, I, I'm just going to not being clear these, these, these words. <laughs> Even forensics. For, that's it. Forensic. And so, and for follow for just oh whatever, Doctor Temp Barron. Then it is a disturbing sight. Now Temp is under pressure to find the answers before thousands arrive for the year's biggest race. Before she can carry out a proper examination, the FBI mysteriously confiscates and destroys the body. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I keep like it's him thinking people crazy eyes. It's a dead end until Wayne Gamble Gamble? Gamble. A young engineer alerts Temp Temp to the dis disappearance of his sister and her boyfriend from from Charlotte twelve years ago. And she just de determined to undercut uncover what really happened to them when a few days later Gam Gamble's body is found crashed under the wheels of a race car. Temp realises the situation is truly sinister and that even her own life could be in terrible danger. Well, I haven't read this book yet, I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> Should have started off with that, but yeah. I got these from, these are just off my bookshelf. I randomly just picked a bunch of books. I haven't read yet, so well, she. I think I, I have got a couple in here I have read, but yeah. Okay, well, this is, it actually says the number one bestseller, so this might be interesting to read because I should also mention I love horror so much. I love the movies, I love the books. If you don't know about these books yet, there's a this book series for young teenagers called Red Eye. I have all the books and I love them so much. So much horror, so much everything in it. Murder, mystery. It's like, oh, I could actually cry because I'm so happy about them. And Red Eye has got another book coming out next year in February. So I can't wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is going to be my type of book. Horror, mystery, you name it. Thriller. Ugh. Get me chills already. I meet. Already 13 minutes in. Okay. So a different genre again. If you have not seen this movie, I or read the book. I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> I I absolutely love the movie of my sister's keeper. I'm quite sure it's based on a true story, but I think it's based around the, the true events of cancer. Yeah, bit of a spoiler. <laughs> well, the blurb actually gives you a bit of a spoiler about that already. But okay, okay, this is by Jodie Pick Picklet. Picklet. I can't read it. The only way to save your daughter is to sacrifice her sister. Ooh. Okay. Is there any? Yeah. There are reviews on the back, like always. I'll read them. I don't mind. <laughs> Heat. It's the first reviews by Heat. Highly, highly gripping. That's good. <laughs> okay, and this is by Independent, Independent on Sunday. Remember, write in the comments if you know if these are newspapers or whatever, because I don't have an idea. 
Her vivid characters have a depth and te <sighs> tendency rarely found in blockbusters. Okay, that's good. I know. <laughs> I do know that already in the movies. In the movie, so. Mm. But we we all say the books are better than the movie. So <laughs> it, I love the movie so much. So if the book's any better than the movie, I think this it'll come my all time favorite book. Okay, let's read the blurb. <sighs> all right, Sarah Victor rolled daughter Kate is just two years old and she is diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. You don't know what leukemia is, it's cancer, very sad. Oh, not even gonna say the rest. <laughs> Reeling with the helpless shock of it, Sarah knows she'll do anything and whatever it takes to save her child. Well, what mother wouldn't? Really? What mother wouldn't do anything to save her child? Okay. Then the re then the test results come back time come back when the, then the test results come back time and again to show that no one in their family is a match for Kate. If they are to find donor for the crucial bone marrow transplant she needs, there is only one opponent creating another baby specifically designed to her safety. For Sarah, uh, this it seems a ideal solution. Not only does Kate live. But she is a beautiful new daughter, Anne, Anna too. Until the moment Anna's hands, until the moment Anna, Anna hands Sarah the papers that will rock her whole world. Because age 13, Anna has decided she doesn't want to help Kate live anymore. She's, she's suing her parents for the rights to her own body. Right. I'm going to say one thing here. You, if you have not read the book, watch the movie. Don't judge Anna. You really don't know the whole, the whole situation until you, if you've read the movie, read the movie, read the book or watch the movie. Okay? Well, yeah. Okay, this book is gonna be one of my number, oh, my, my number one favourite to read. And I'm gonna say now is I can be in love with it forever. <laughs> okay. I also got this book from a charity shop after I love the I love the movie so much, I decided to get the book. And I also got it in a charity shop and I'm more rightly it cost me fifty P so win win. <laughs> right, let's go on to the next book. This one's called The Thirteenth Tale. Ta da! And it's by Diane Setter Sessfield. Okay. I'm just gonna go through the blurb in that lot. <laughs> okay, this the reviews. This is one from, from the Times. Glorious, beautifully written. Bang. I can't read this word. It's it's a type it's for other review. This is by the by. I'm gonna spell it out you guys because I yeah, can't read it. C O F M O P O L I T A N. Cosmopolitan. That's not right, is it? <laughs> okay. Start reading this on the bus. I swear you won't only miss your stop. You might even lose the whole day. Now, that's intriguing. I actually, it does sound intriguing how it's set, how they place it, the words in that, and they make the book so, sound so, so addictive. So, mm. <laughs> Angel Field House stands abandoned and forgotten. It was once the imposing house of the March family. Fascinating, manipulative, Isabella, Charlie, her beautiful, brutal, bro dangerous brother, the wild, untamed twins, Emmeline and Adeline, but Anne Angelfield's house conceals a chilling secret whose impact will, will re resonate, resonate, re resonates. Now Margaret Lee is investigating Angelfield's past and the mystery of the March family starts to unravel. 
what has the house been hiding? What is it, its connection with the enigmatic author, Vivid Winter? And what is is it in Mar Margaret's own troubled past that caused her to fall so powerfully under Angelfield's spell? I love it when blurbs just, it's like it pulls you in. You it may, That's the whole point of blurb, isn't it? A blurb is to pull you in, to make you want to read more. But I just love it. And another charity shop book. And this one's like in perfect condition, except from, you know, some bends and bumps there. But I love getting a good deal on books. <laughs> I don't normally actually buy brand new books. I have done a couple times. But I don't mind buying them if they're it's something I know I'll definitely read. <sighs> I think I'm going to end it there actually. I will make another video, FaceTime, what I'm going to call it, <laughs> about the other books I've got in my bag, my special bag. Yes, it's by the bag is the pet life bag. <laughs> and I've got like my, all my books from my bookcase in there. Well, not all of them. I couldn't bring all of them down here. I've got about 40 up there. <laughs> my bedroom. <laughs> Alright then. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out my other videos. I've got book reviews. I've got my, other, my channel, Emmy's Talk of Books. And don't forget to subscribe if you liked me talk about books and that lot. And like, comment. Your choice, really. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about books. You must be a really bookworm to want to just sit here and talk about books. Not like me. <laughs> Alright. Have a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this. And don't forget to come back for more. Goodbye.